crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. And you're live. And make sure your phone's on silent. Oh, silent your device. <laughs> silent your device. Yes, exactly. <laughs> okay. Happy Friday. I can't believe it's already Friday again. I can't either. Mostly because like, I didn't. It's worrisome that it's already <laughs> Friday again. I didn't work today. I had the day off, so. Is this where I make a sarcastic joke about how you don't work any day? I don't think that's even really a joke you would make. <laughs> I think you would make the opposite joke. I mean, working hard or hardly working, right? Okay. Now, now we know you're a dad. All right. What are we drinking? What's the big surprise? Oh, you can't even see it. No. The most dramatic. What is this? I wasn't even sharp yet. That's why I wasn't working that well for you. Okay. <laughs> All right, what is this? This is beer. It's, it's a fermented beverage. Uh-huh. It's a new thing we're like trying meats, out. Wheat, wheat and hops or something? I don't know how they make it. Given the fact that we're originally from Wisconsin. I don't know what it is. It's probably more ridiculous <coughs> we don't drink beer. There's like water in it. This is a local beer that's Lip Bridge Farm Girl. I like this of theirs the most. So... Last week we did margaritas and someone mentioned, hey, you guys should like branch out to beer. What's funny is that like the first, this is our 10 year. crack that for you. Oh, thank you. It's our 10 year wedding anniversary in October. For the first yeah, like, that, huh? oh yeah. Majority of our life we drank beer. Like if we drank something, it was beer. Cheers. <laughs> I, we brought these glasses so we can be like extra fancy, I think. I think I'll put on glasses. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, I usually drink for the can. Usually we don't drink out of the bottle when we have wine, so I mean. <laughs> okay. <laughs> why is this any different? All right, all right. You know? And this is your fancy glass. Like, I don't know if some, someone made these for you. I can't see Tom. it. Tom. Tom. Yeah. Thank you, Tom. It has mads you can't tell right now. His logo on it, which I think is cool. And that's um, April's logo, too, for her woodshed thing. It's a thing. It's a thing. It's, it's a, a place, thing. I think. Not a thing. It's well, a thing place. Thing place. Perfect. All right. Hey, look at that. Yeah, I here. So I feel like if people are like really big into beer, either they're going to be like, this is okay. Okay beer or whatever. Where I work with a bunch of hoarders. Hoarders? Lawyers. Lawyers? Yeah, I do work with a bunch of lawyers. <laughs> they're all like, I don't want to say all of them, but many of them are kind of beer snobs. So I'm sure that they'll be like, this is not fancy beer. This is fancy beer to me. So. I like it. Kind of like a spotted cow kind of thing. Yeah, that's why I like it. Spotted cow. It's very minute of Wisconsin ish. I did a horrible job pouring. I, can't, I used to be a bartender, and that's bad. I mean, you're really out of practice. <laughs> yeah. Like, really out of practice. Now. Really, really out of practice. Mm. Beer. That's good, though. Why don't you tell everybody about what thing you're working on? I've already been talking a lot. Yeah, I like it. It's nice. Mm -hmm. So, with the day job. we started this live, which was in May of last year. May? It was May. Um, I can actually figure out the actual date if we wanted, because I actually... Yeah, just go back. Okay, that too, I meant, like, through my emails. Anyway, I, um, I'd always told Matt that I wanted to make a bird like this. Matt Lovell, he sent me this bird. He made it. It's beautiful. I'm obsessed with it. It sits on my desk at work, and I go like this a lot, like a weird person. I hold it. It's a good thing I don't face your desk. <laughs> I love it. It's so smooth. Good thing my back is to you the whole day. I used to like had to be careful during Zoom calls because I was like going at this. People are like, "What are you rubbing on your face?" I'm doing my facial. And I'm like, "It's my bird." <laughs> They're like, "Oh, it's my bird, my face bird." <laughs> I mean, you don't massage your face with a bird? Yeah, I know. Ever? No. They're just like, "Oh yeah, it's Lindsay. We're used to her being weird." So I want to make my own. This is how far I am. This is our, my little bird, Fatty, because he's a lot fatter. So that's why Matt named him that. Like significantly fatter. I don't know how this works. He's a big old bottom bird. Mm -hmm. but I'm like really happy so far. I've only gotten the head kind of going right now. Yeah, you got some shaping to do. A little bit. So yeah. Not quite as shapely yet. Mm -hmm. Very boxy. Well, yeah. The boxy bird. He's a box bird right now, but not for long. So that's what we were working on today, and hopefully I'll finish it. Never. Why would you say that? I mean. Faster than it took you to start? Yeah. Yeah, because Matt videoed the whole thing so we can actually put it in. <laughs> Hopefully it'll be faster than your skateboard video. Yeah. That took forever to produce. Oh, did it? Probably because we had so many outtakes because I was like 
Yeah, like Terrible. I think we did like eight different days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for like an hour a piece, mm -hmm. I think. Just like the form. Well, it's partially because like because we have kids and they don't sleep. The only time we could do it would be at night, and then even then it's like okay, well our kids yeah. don't go to fall asleep until like ten o'clock sometimes. You know, you would be done, and it's like, well, I don't want to do this for longer than that. So, um, I'm feeling it. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, Kevin. It is a really poor <laughs> technique. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. I mean, yeah. Someone else is gonna drink this. Yeah, someone else. Like, when it's me, I'm like, it can have a lot of head. I guess. <laughs> All right, so that's what we've been working on. So hopefully there'll be a video up sooner than later on that. Well, hopefully first I finish it. I mean, yeah, finish it first, <laughs> and then it can be a video. I like this. It's a Kardashian bird. It's got a big booty. Mm -hmm. It's like a front side too. Yeah, yeah. It's good all around. <laughs> like big birds, around. and I cannot lie. <laughs> all right, so tell me stuff. This is pretty good. Yeah, Matt and I haven't drank beer in a long time, to be honest. Not for any reason. It's wine. I mean, outside of that, yeah. We, because wine. Because we don't That's why. buy beer, though. <laughs> we have wine shipped to us through a wine club. So it's like you don't have to make like the affirmative decision to buy wine. It's going to come to your house eventually. I'm sure they get that for beer, too. Oh, I know they do. But we're not members. <laughs> Yet. I don't know. <laughs> no, I feel no. like beer is like more like you're more inclined to drink it quickly. Mm-hmm. Or is wine like you can collect it? Yeah, I know what you're saying. I guess. Yeah. Maybe. Mm -hmm. I'm making that up. Maybe so, a little bit. actually, Amit's Thor Hard Cider is right by us, by our house. Yeah, it's like right down there, right? Yes, yeah, it's on the street. Where am I going here? It's I that way. It's down the street. It's, that, it's over there. And actually, it's really good. I do like it. It's sweet, for sure, but it's good. No, we're like five miles from here. <laughs> right down Manning. <laughs> Oh, funny. Joachim, tell the story when Fonto wasn't available. No. <laughs> That's an old law school buddy of I mine. when you were in law school. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. What a, wow. What a time that was. I know. Yeah. And Joachim is one of my friends. He's a good guy. And he's actually now over in Sweden doing way, probably way still, more fun stuff. He's still. Well, I didn't go to law school in Sweden. I know, but like, he has, like, make it like, sound like... He went back and then like he was like somewhere else for a while and then like he went back again. He probably did. He was very well traveled. It wouldn't surprise me if he, he went somewhere really cool. Well, I guess he was pretty cultured. Yeah, he is very cultured. So, yes. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, and you he know. went out and saw the driving hats of the world. That's know. right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was funny. Um, all right. Oh wow, this is so nice. Uh, my friend and I flew off a family Zoom because we had to meet our dear friends from Minnesota. Cheers to saving us happy. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of families do Zoom, or that I've heard, I can't even imagine our family doing that. That sounds terrible. We did it. Sounds like chaotic. Once. I would say terrible, but chaotic. Yeah. With my word. parents, my brother and sister for Easter last year, did my, you didn't participate. I don't remember this at all. I have no recollection of this. Yeah, my, um, yeah, we did that. And then, you know, it just doesn't work. I mean, we do used to do Zoom happy hours, like work happy hours in the beginning. Like the first, we were like, this will just be like for a month. And that also was really didn't work out. No, it's too hard. I feel like. Huh. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know. Buddy. All right. From our buddies, I our neighbors, know. old neighbors, Corey and Cherry. Any plans for fake spring this weekend? Yeah, getting a house ready to be out of my life. Hey, Corey. Do you want to paint a house? <laughs> do you want to paint a house? <laughs> Sherry, do you want to paint a house? We're going by you guys tomorrow. I'll be there tomorrow. Yeah. I'm sure on Sunday, too. Mm -hmm. That's what I've been doing with my beautiful, it's me so nice inside. Like painting a dang house. Mm -hmm. House painter. You want to elaborate? Outside, inside, all the sides? Everything. Inside and outside, I guess. Yep. I still have to finish outside. Oh, I'm bad I see you broke my mic thing. It's not. It's fine. Yep. Anyway, I got to paint the house because we got kids, and uh, kids and hands and walls don't mix at mm -hmm. all. So yeah. 
Yeah, It'll make it a little prettier looking. Yeah. The walls are all screwed up, dirty looking, yeah. and scratched. But more like from like the like third down. Yes, yeah, like from like waist height <laughs> down. It's bad. Yeah, and there are places where, because we lived in that house for the toddler years of all three of them. Yeah. Like there's crayon marks, just like random ones mm -hmm. that you don't notice until you move all the furniture and you're like, did they? Yeah. Drop yeah. behind that, you know, underneath the table at some point. Yeah, yeah, yeah they, they did. did. Yeah, they did yeah. do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, we just didn't know because there was a table yeah. over there, but you know, they go under it. So yeah, well, we'll hopefully make a good dent in the painting list this weekend. Uh huh. Oh, someone's got a spray paint sprayer you can borrow. AP, who are you? I feel like you have to like mask a lot for that. Do you? I in, think in a finished room. Yeah. Because like I'm not gonna do the ceiling, I'm not gonna do the floor. Mm -hmm. I don't want to paint on the floor. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. oh, it's just so much stuff. Yeah, it's a lot. It is a lot, but hopefully I'm almost done, and then I gotta get the shop done. I'm done, I guess, on Shopified. So what do you have to do there? Well, I have the bridge port to move up. Probably maybe I'll do that this weekend. Bring that back. Mm -hmm. Um. Take down everything else is still in the shop. So mm -hmm. there's like the lumber rack is still up. Mm -hmm. And it's just like a bolting stuff off the wall. Uh, I feel like the shelving things are still up. Uh, I gotta take down the air thingy, whatever it's called, the filter, air filter thingy. The ceiling mm -hmm. mounted air purifier cleaner filter thing. Yep. Um, and then the rest of the lights have to come down. And then I need to insulate the joist bays. Mm -hmm. And then drywall it all and then tape and mud all those seams to make it into a garage again. Yeah, because right now there's nothing, yeah, it's, it's not open, insulated. It's open base, so I have to convert it from a shop into a garage. Yeah. Not a part of that either. And stuff out of our yard. Which is mostly wood, and that's about it. And a sawmill. I mean, mostly wood, it's like, that doesn't make it insignificant. I think that makes it worse. <laughs> <laughs> it's mostly wood, but you know, big pieces of wood. Yeah, and a lot of it, like stacks and stacks. Stacks and stacks. Maybe it's like include with the house, you know. I could, okay, sure. Yard art. <laughs> you know, I said art installation. Yeah, I don't think the how much you charge per slab, someone's gonna want art. For, I mean, maybe. I guess people. Depends the kind of buyer you attract. That's true. You know? That's true. You know, maybe they want a little fifty thousand dollar art installation. Maybe so. I mean, we talk of the neighborhood. Okay. <laughs> God. <laughs> you can charge admission. Mm -hmm, you can come mm -hmm. see your art. Yeah. You're insane. Just think about it. You know, mm -hmm. like tree, deconstructed. <laughs> the exhibit. Wow. Okay. You're. So from um, Aaron, super chat so you can upgrade to wine. Oh gosh. <laughs> Well, that's, that was a problem. <laughs> oh, dude. Oh, oh, here's Five dollar wine. Where is it? It's an upgrade. So you spent this, you upgrade more. Yes, silly. Like, oh, that's true. Thirteen dollars. Yeah. Heck yeah. That's like the that. thing. I feel like beer. Well, the beer that like fancy beer is expensive. My coworkers were telling me that like they buy like a four pack and it's like twenty bucks. And I'm like, what? Or more. It's like, you know, a bottle of wine is 20 bucks. Yeah. Same kind of deal, four glasses. I suppose. You're making it seem like it's not ridiculous, no? <laughs> I mean, it's all perspective. It's true, it's true. Where'd it go? Mm, mm hmm. Mm, mm, mm hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm, yeah, yeah. Where'd it go, though? Someone asked. Uh, like an actual question? Um, a good one? Yeah, this is a good one. Hey, Matt, I was wondering if you knew a way to get bright white bleach in a softwood. Get it in? Bleach in Like to like actually bleach it or like make it more white? I love when you're asking me these follow-up questions. <laughs> I don't- You asked me the question. I don't have the answer. Uh, there are wood bleaching products that you can investigate and try. Mm -hmm. uh, Mark has done that with, uh, I think it was cherry. I mm -hmm. think he bleached it. So I'm guessing the same kind of process. Mm -hmm. So wood bleach. Okay. Wood bleach. Bleach. 
And this is from Shane. What do you think the best prank placement is for his Matt's face sticker? Directly over your own face. <laughs> oh my gosh! That... <laughs> like your nose. <laughs> I guess they're kind of small. Uh... <laughs> I You've mean, seen some, right? Like, what ones have you seen? Are actual pranks? I don't know. You know, it's silly. Fun stuff. I mean, Angus is funny because only, like, a certain number of people know who that actually is. Yeah. So that's kind of funny. Mm-hmm. I yeah. don't know. Mm -hmm. Anywhere. Anywhere. If you need more, I'll give you more. Yeah, it, it, I feel like I find them in if, random if spots in house. If it doesn't work out, I, we, can, we, can, we can set you up with another one. Yes. Bring the mic closer. Everyone always says you're so quiet. I'm quiet? Always. Every time we do this. This is the same exact placement I use whenever I record my videos. I think it's because I just naturally speak louder, and I swear to goodness, lately you've been speaking quieter. Well, you know, you're loud. Mm-hmm. And hard to talk over. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I should be louder now. Yeah, or just make mine quieter. I don't know how to... I'm not going to mess with that right now. Okay, great. We ain't messing with that. Yep. Mm-hmm. No, ain't no. doing it. <laughs> Put Matt's picture over a video baby monitor. <laughs> Put it on your baby. <laughs> on your baby. <laughs> that's a lead to closer placement. Right. Face. <laughs> Poor baby. He's got a lot of hair. And a beard. <laughs> and a beard. <laughs> Get a little stubble coming in there, little baby. <laughs> oh, you weirdo. Yeah, well, you know. Mm -hmm, it's just something mm -hmm. I do every now and then. Yeah. You weird. Be weird all the time, all the time. Oh, we're getting there. We're getting there. So from Jamie, sorry guys, but whiskey is the way to go. And I mean a proper Irish whiskey. So our friends, Corey and Cherry, that's different though, isn't it? What? Scotch and whiskey. They're not the same, but they are the same. You act me, I, I know anything about this stuff. I feel like you do. A blue scotch is a form of whiskey. It's right. Ours, yes. Our friends, Sherry and Corey, they have a YouTube channel called All About Dram. About Dram Time? About Dram Time. Tell me, tell me Dram. Because that... Dram mean. Dram. <laughs> if you're into, like, scotch, you get that. I don't get it. I don't get it. I think it's like a um, measurement. Yes. So... We learned that. I did. Yeah. It's, it's like a shot, but a dram. So... There you go. They, they have lots of... Um, can go elsewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying that they actually know what they're talking about. So like we, cause there are neighbors across the street at our old house and you know, every once in a while they'd be like, Hey, we have this like fun whiskey or scotch. Do you want to try it? And I'd always feel bad because I'm like, it's actually very nice. No, no, no. And I feel like it's wasted on my palate. I don't really want to try it. <laughs> <laughs> but I will anyway. Oh, <laughs> funny, funny, funny. Oh really? Mm -hmm. Funny, funny, funny. Mm -hmm. All right, let's see. I have questions for Lindsay. Why? I like Lindsay's questions. No, I feel like lately I've been talking more because I think you are just being like really silent. I'm letting, I'm giving you the spotlight. No. People like hearing from you. People. People don't hear from me, they hear from you. That's not even remotely accurate. I'm pretty sure someone with a child wouldn't say. I'm sure like at least one person is here for me. Yeah, hey, your mom. Yeah, my mom. Actually, I was supposed to say my dad. My mom is here for you. That's true, never mind. <laughs> yeah, come on. Good point, what am I thinking? <laughs> Oh, funny. Oh, here's the answer to the question. All scotch is whiskey, but not all whiskey is scotch. There you go. It's one of those transitive property things. There we go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Actually, we learned that in, like, logic for law school. The, the transitive property? Yeah, because, like, a lot of people make false arguments you based know, on that. You learned that in high school geometry? I didn't take geometry. Oh, well, I don't tell you. Mm -hmm. That's where we learned it. It's part of proofs. Mm-hmm. You know, geometric proofs? Yeah, I do remember that term, but I didn't... Transitive property is a pretty core fundamental thing of geometric proofs. Okay. I feel like you've read my book with me because I just finished The Dutch House, which is so good. It's like, and it was talking about fundamentals of chemistry in that case. And it was like, if you don't remember, if you don't learn chapter one, don't move on to chapter two because nothing makes sense. What, like, what are you talking about? Never chemistry? Mind. Yeah, I feel like what you're saying, like proofs, the fundamentals, move to the next. Well, I mean, if it's like a thing, if it's a subject matter to build upon itself, then yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. I was talking about geometry. 
I know you were, but I was saying, I felt like because you, the way you were talking about it, it was as if you're like, remember you just read The Dutch House? They just talked remember about it. Remember you just read about this? <laughs> you just talked you about just read this. read that book that I didn't listen to? You just knew a little bit of it. And you I were don't like, pay attention. I'm like, what is going on? This is, no. Yeah. Books. Get me out of here. All right. Everyone agrees. They're here for pancake. And I get it. I get it. Yeah, Aaron will be here for a pancake. So is Patrick. Oh, fine. All See? right. Then yes. Yeah. There's mm -hmm. legitimacy then. So is Jake. Dang it. See? I mean, <laughs> she's always the star. She's passed out on the floor. <laughs> she actually really is. She's so she cool. had a hard day. She did have a hard day. Snorting around. Taking she, too many naps. I think she had a hard day because I didn't work today. And so she she and I are buddies. We, she sits by me while I work. And she's just like, what's going on here? We sit in that room and sleep. We don't sit in this room and sleep. Yeah, there's no room to sleep in here. Yeah. Although the floor is heated, so it's kind of warm for her, maybe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is that? Yeah. I mm -hmm. guess. Yeah, yeah. All right, I'll let you take this question. How did meeting the architect go? Well, pretty well, I thought. Really? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, fine. I'll, I'll have a real answer now. Okay. It's, it's, it's Sam. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll play it up for him a little bit. You gotta play it up. You gotta play it up. He puts up with all my other crap from the week. Uh huh. Okay. You okay. Know, we set him a little snowmobile posts and memes and things mm -hmm, mm -hmm. about people crashing their snowmobiles. Right. Yeah. Occasionally he laughs too. Anyway, uh, also he sends me stuff to watch, like uh, racing videos. And all right, we're talking about the architect meeting. Can we bring you back into that? <laughs> Fine. As you take like a slow drink <laughs> back. I think um, uh, it was good. We learned, I think we learned some stuff about okay. ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they asked us a lot of like, I don't know, like non, they're obvious now. Yeah. But like, you wouldn't have ever thought of these things like the way that we Parent. use the house and how we parent with the people in the house and like how we do guests and like are we like more philosophical stuff like how do you feel about noise do you yeah do you want to be able to hear people in the basement do you want to hear them or do you want to be like i closed off this room like they asked like how many like people get together average how many people do you think you're going to have versus like a party yeah but then it was questions like okay tell me how you use your kitchen Poorly, <laughs> very poorly. <laughs> but it was it was kind of interesting where they're like, okay, so I told them what's important to me is I want to be able, I like to cook. I want to be able to cook, but we want multiple people in the kitchen at one time. Like, cause they were like, okay, if you're cooking a meal, what is Matt doing? And I'm like, well, he's sometimes helping. Like he'll grill or he'll make rice. And they're like, okay, so you're both in the kitchen at the same time. And I'm like, well, yeah, like that's not uncommon. Yeah. But it was stuff like that. So they're like, okay, so you want enough room so that you aren't knocking into each other. Because I feel like you made a really good point about... I never heard this term before I until you... I point. I made a good point. <laughs> God. You heard it here first. Really? What's today? March something? Do not be that kind of husband to pretend that your wife is always, like, crabbing on you. But I'm trying to play a character. Oh, I forgot. Is this, like, your Steve Colbert when you did the, like, Colbert show? Yeah. You're like, I'm not me. I'm like me. I'm like me. I'm an eccentric version of myself. <laughs> God. <laughs> Uh, what, what, what crazy awesome thing did I say? Well, I've never heard this term before. And I feel like maybe it's a woodworking term or something. But you said there's a lot of, what was it, crunch corner? Oh, there's a lot of choke points. There you in go. The home, in the home now. All right, explain that. Because I like, never heard that term before. And then I was like, you're right. That's exactly what it is. There's a lot of areas where like you can easily get cut off from where you want to go mm -hmm. to move around the home. So like the dining room is the example that I gave. Because if you're at the table, now with a chair and someone sitting in it, you can't walk around the table because there's a, a sideboard there and the room isn't big enough to have a table and furniture mm -hmm. in the room. Mm -hmm. And then the same things in the kitchen because the kitchen has a peninsula and then an aisle and the fridge is there. So if you open the fridge, you can't get in the kitchen anymore. Mm -hmm. So you're blocking whoever is trying to get in there. So mm -hmm. it's, it's all about like bottleneck points, I guess. So we talked about that too, Yeah, which is cool. So, yeah, we talked for like an hour and a half, and then uh, maybe they'll have some ideas. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> but certain things, like, I feel like... Or like, how do you come in the home? 
That was the other big one. We're like, mm -hmm. I don't really know because if we turn this back into a garage mm -hmm. and we start going in the house through this door, the garage is it's connected. no longer that it's not f as functional as the entrance upstairs because there's no room to like take your stuff off. Yeah, and I get naked. Because <laughs> we live in Minnesota where you wear layers during like eight months of the year. Yeah, but can you imagine five people coming into a hallway? Right. And be like, hey, we're in a hallway now. Everybody get out of my way and. Or, you know, you, we just came from whatever, playing out, well, it'd be car-wise, but you got your boots, you got snow pants, we just went to go get the Christmas tree or something, and it's like, all right, everyone now is going to walk all the way upstairs in their muddy or wet stuff to go undress. Right. It's stuff like that where they're like, well, where would make the most sense to have a mud room? Because right now we're going through the front door because the garage is a shop, so that's not a forever plan. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. That will be, uh, yeah. Yeah. We'll see the, what, what the end deck is, mm -hmm. and we'll, we'll evolve from there. I like this. How does X work? Very well, thank you. I feel like that was... <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you know, those simple things, like, you know, like, thing, woods I like. Yeah. Okay. I like them. I like them. That's it. I like them. a wood name here. I like it. It's nice. Yeah. So, when's the next workshop video? I gotta do it, still. I have a bunch of them, and I haven't had a chance to shoot the electrical video yet. Mm -hmm. So it's going to go electrical, and then we're going to move the hand tool cabinet, which is you know already here. It's been here for like a month and a half. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to assemble a dust collector, and then we are going to probably do the duct work after that. And then uh, I think that's probably going to be pretty much probably like one little la last little like layout video, and that's probably going to be like the last shop setup video, I think. Mm -hmm. Probably something like that because I got a few little more little tweaks to do. Okay. Um, mostly with just the layout of things I use more commonly. So like stuff I have in my in my toolbox because the toolbox used to be right by the workbench, so mm -hmm. I have all my filming stuff in the toolbox, which doesn't really make sense anymore. Mm -hmm. It should probably be over here. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, there's that too, I guess. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot. There's a lot to do, and then I got to get into like some shop like organization projects or like shop furniture fixture projects like all my clamps are still laying here on the floor i need to put up the clamp racks somewhere and figure out how it's going to go uh put up like a, like a sandpaper holder thing i gotta do some kind of table saw cart thing to mm -hmm. put all the table saw crap in what else am i gotta do i'm sure there's other things but it's like stuff like that like a lot of the storage fixtures don't make sense in the space mm -hmm. so i threw them away Mm -hmm. I didn't even bother moving them. I, I ran them over the scoot steer. It's kind of fun. You guys, <laughs> ever, you guys ever ran over a cabin with the scoot steer? God. It's kind of fun. <laughs> Melamine. Doesn't, it doesn't really hold up very well to a little baby scoot steer. It's a lot of crunching. Mm -hmm. And then you just toss in the garbage can. <laughs> <laughs> that, that crunching part was probably unnecessary, but maybe. Well, I mean, it was, it was, a, it was, a, it was a cabinet. Oh, okay. I'm going to take it apart. So you're like, I'll just run it over. I just drove over it. And smushed it. The pieces and then threw the garbage can. Oh, I feel like the kids would love that. All right. Cheap beer. How about cheap chisels? Can you ever get them really sharp? You can get them very sharp. But the difference is that they don't stay sharp. Okay. So it's like how often do you want to resharpen them? That is exactly it. So there is the, I guess, well, let's call it like, what's the word for it? Like philosophy, I guess. Mm -hmm. There's a philosophy of this of like when you're getting started, do you spend the money and get some good chisels from the start, or you save your money and like just get some cheap ones and figure out what you're doing? Uh, the way that I went was the cheap chisel route, and going with that way because with the cheaper ones, they don't the edges don't retain their sharpness very long, so you have to sharpen them very frequently. And what that forces you to do is to get pretty damn good at sharpening. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if you get your expensive chisels. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to sharpen them very often, but you don't know how to sharpen either. Probably not going to do a very good job then, maybe. And even if you have expensive chisels and you can't sharpen them, it's not going to help at all either. Right. So there's like the two kind of sides. You can do both. I mean, you can like have your expensive chisels and sharpen them really often just for fun to practice. Mm -hmm. But nailing your sharpening technique and method that works for you, that you can actually put a sharp. It's those core mental things. What? Mm -hmm. There's just like a really, even though it's not, even now a delay on ours, which is interesting. Okay. Anyway, so that's like one of the baseline things. If you can't sharpen anything, 
the rest of the stuff isn't really going to be fun or effective. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I wouldn't be able to build much furniture if I couldn't sharpen my stuff okay. to, like, the level I can do now. Right. Right. So from Dennis, slow speed, who makes the best hole saw? Is such a thing as a hole saw? Oh, yeah. There's hole saws. Okay. Who makes the best? I don't know. I've only used them. So is Benjamin. He also likes what? Milwaukee. Okay. So, I like two votes like for Milwaukee. I like go down to the store and I can pick up whatever size I need. Okay. You don't have them. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Not bad. Okay. You can spend a lot of money on whole saws. You get the carbide ones. You get the bimetal ones. Mm -hmm. You can do whatever you want. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Scott... Pop by Lee Valley today and uh, must be nice just to be able to pop by <laughs> Lee Valley. Those Canadians, they're in Lee Valley stores. Remember, you actually went there specifically. We went to the store. Like we went like out of our way because he's like, we're going to this. I went there twice. <laughs> I went with my dad uh -huh. when we were in town for that wedding. Yeah. And then we went, I went with you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the Vaughn store. Yeah. Um, I actually know exactly where it is. And a Veritas <laughs> block plane. I said that wrong. Veritas. Veritas block plane followed me home. And, uh, and I nearly right, started right doing it. the parking lot, huh? <laughs> <laughs> it just, it followed him. He, he didn't want it to come home, but it was, you know, a stray it's little, like, hey, little plane. Hey, Scotty. I mean, I need a home. I'm, I'm cute. <laughs> I'm little. I have a sharp blade. But he said he immediately started using it without honing the blade. Am I a bad person? No, with those ones, you don't really, I mean, you don't really have to. I just think it going. Mm -hmm. Like my, um... My Lee Nielsen stuff, I don't, I don't sharpen it. Um, the new stuff, I won't mm -hmm. sharpen it out of the box. I just use it as is. Yeah. Because it's fine. It's like mm -hmm. sharp enough. Right. For like most things, and then you just sharpen it whenever it gets dull. So like my, my number four, I didn't sharpen that for like a few months after because it, it takes shavings out of the box. Mm -hmm. That's what you're paying for. <laughs> That's what I'm paying for you for. Right? so much money. <laughs> They're like basically ready to go. Mm -hmm. And like the the sharpening, like the honing that you're supposed to do with them is like like two quick straps and you're done, or two quick things on your most fine stone, and you're done. Yeah. So you get that last little polish on there, mm -hmm. if you want to, or right. you can like wait till later. You can do four straps. Is that two? So from Eric, have you ever tried making a wooden beer mug or a wooden sleeve to cover a glass? I have not tried any either of those. Do you think cold or is it is that possible? Yeah, you can do a sleeve of kits where it's like the uh, stainless steel mm -hmm. insert thing. Yeah. And then you have the, like, it just slides. What are those things called? I don't know what they're called now. Like a koozie? Kind of like that, but it's like for the travel mugs. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yep, yep. They have kits for those. You buy a travel mug and then you turn basically a, a cylinder, a thin walled cylinder that just mm -hmm. it slides in there. Right. So from BC Jams, did you take shop in middle school or did they still teach school, teach shop in your area to the kids? Uh, they don't have it in middle school. They had it in high school. I did not take it, no. Mine, we have it and we still have it. But I grow up, I, where I have like everyone, like I took, I don't know, I just, I feel like my school, we're in the middle of nowhere in Wisconsin. We had a lot more trade classes than I think other places have it. But conversely, like. Kenosha, we had trade classes, but. The college-bound students were discouraged from taking it. Oh, that's crazy. See, like, we didn't have AP classes. Like, I had two history classes, ancient and modern. Like, that is... I mean, that's, that's it. That was it. That's, I mean, that's the whole history of humanity. <laughs> yes. Um, versus, like, we had... I had, yeah, like, that's, a, like, basically all I had, too. It was, like, world history and U.S. history, and that was it. But you had AP history classes. Uh, I don't think we had AP history when I was there. Oh. But, like, we had... I mean, everyone took um, auto 101 at my school because you learn how to like change your oil. And we had that. Yeah. Didn't take it. I, I feel like almost my entire school took that. We had like a sewing class. We had. We had home ec. Yeah. Also, not something that honor students would take. Oh. Because yeah. Because you would lower your GPA just by taking it. Yeah. See, like we didn't instantly I, lower it. Why? Because it's based on the weights scale. Oh, we didn't have weights. The honors scale. classes crazy. were a 6.0 scale. Oh, yeah. So no. a A in a regular class is a C in an honors class. Yeah. 
That's like that's how, we had such a different high school experience. We don't, I don't even know what honors classes mean. Like, they're weighted heavily. No, I mean I heavier. do, but I mean like, we didn't. That was just not a thing. But I mean, like this is like to the extent that yeah. gym is a regular class. So if you wanted to, uh, you know, game the system, yeah, you would get a doctor's note saying that you didn't have to take gym. That's insane. So that you didn't have that strike against you. Strike. And your class ranking is higher than the guy who has to take gym. gym. Right. The same thing with health. That was also required. But if you can get out of taking it, you're instantly <sighs> doing better and you look better on your college application. It's crazy. I so just, that was the system that I went through. Right. Which is insane to me. Like, so I never took shop for that exact reason. Because you're like, I need to get into college. So I need to go to college <laughs> and I got to get a class rank that's not garbage. Right. Whereas I graduated with honors, was taught in my class. I took three hours of art classes my senior year. No, but I'm saying like, and that's, but the difference is like, I took three hours of different art classes senior year because that was like totally well, acceptable. I mean, senior year is fine because you already got into college then. Yeah, but I mean, I took two in just like junior year like, <laughs> because I really liked pottery, and so I would do different like pottery classes, and we just had a lot more like hand focused classes. Like I took an architectural class. We had shop. Different varieties of shop. You keep saying that, but like I had those classes available to me. No, what I'm saying is that like we were not penalized for taking it. So okay, like yeah. a lot of people took it yeah. because it was like, yeah, of course, it sounds fun. Like that's I, exactly actually you, you, that's exactly what it is. You were penalized for taking exactly any right. of that stuff. Right. Versus we were like encouraged to take it because good or bad people are like, yeah, this is like an easier like this is a fun easy class. Of course, I'm taking Auto 101. Someone else is going to pay me to change my oil. I mean, I get someone else. It's paying for the oil to change in my car. Of course, I'm doing it. Like, so, yeah. It just it's crazy to me. So, two different experiences, I guess. Yeah, in the same state, even. It's not like we were in different countries. We were both in the state of Wisconsin. Same state. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sounds like our high school had a tech class that basically took advantage of students to repair the school's computers. <laughs> That doesn't surprise me in the least. I mean, that's just, that's thrifty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the value. The value, yes. Oh, value. High value. So, yeah, so you did it. You learned all of this later in college. Yeah, on my own, though. Right, I know. You didn't take, like, a college shop class. I don't know if they... I mean, some colleges have that, but I don't think the cross did. You might have gotten some of that through, like, the theater program. Oh. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Theater tech, but... I don't think they had anything similar to that. That's probably the closest you would get to getting woodworking type education on campus. Um, so back to your shop. Do you think the garage <laughs> doors need to be insulated? Um, you know, I don't know if they need to be insulated. It definitely makes it a little more comfortable. Uh, I didn't insulate mine for probably the first couple of years, I think. I, I'm looking at you like you would know. And the old shop. Yeah. I don't know when I put that pink stuff up on the wall, on the, mm -hmm. on the doors, but it was in the first winter. Um, I didn't really notice a whole lot of, like, difference in, like, how much the heater would run to, like, keep the mm. room warm. Which matters for you mostly because when he's filming, he has to stop. That was before I was filming, though, oh, too. Oh, okay. So I was, that didn't matter either. Um, but I remember, like, I installed it, and I'm like, I was expecting, like, a big difference. Mm -hmm. It wasn't really all that much of a change. So... I don't know if it, it should be. I think air sealing is definitely more important, but I don't know. I remember doing it because it was like, it was back when we didn't have a whole lot of money either. And the, the sheets of styrofoam were like $25. Mm -hmm. And I needed three sheets. And I actually needed like three and like an eighth. Mm -hmm. And in the old shop, if you watch the old videos, there's one section that doesn't have foam. And I'm like, I ain't buying another sheet. <laughs> <laughs> like, hell no. I don't spend that money again. No way. Yeah. So this is a question from Ken. Matt, would you have woodworking ideas for beginners in 4-H? So what would be like a good, you know, middle school age? First? He's like, I don't know like what they would do in 4-H. Because oh. I never had 4-H. Well, um, but I had, to, I had to go to the state fair. Yeah, he knows, he knows 4-H. Well, yeah. I know, I know 4-H via the state fair. My sister was in 4-H. You've seen my sister do stuff. Band. <laughs> she did band That's too. That's all I saw her do. <laughs> Her, some of her, like, needlepoint stuff was in, she would put that in for 4-H. Never knew that. See, I learned something today. Okay, so what, what's go a more. good woodworking project for 4-H for kids? Just think of it as Boy Scouts. It's, the, it's akin. 
whatever the heck they want to make, right? Whatever they're interested in, right? Well, right, but they're going to do like a class. So it's like, that's how it works. So you're like, I'm going to take how to make a birdhouse, right? Like, do you think that's something that six to, you know, what, 12 to 15 year olds, probably younger, maybe 10 to 15 year olds can handle with like probably minimal tools? Ask me once my kids are like 10 years older and I've gone through this. Okay, well, they're I have, asking I have now. no like perspective on what a child that age can do, mm-hmm. right? No, I don't think that's the answer. I know it's not the answer, but like, what what's their attention age? I'm not worried about attention span at all. I'm more worried about like, I I think that they could probably make this a, a bird. I do think that I don't know if it's practical because I don't think that 4-H has access to a bandsaw that really? they can have five kids or six, uh, you know. They don't have access to a bandsaw? Really? Oh, well, mine didn't. They'd have to go to someone's house to do it. Okay. Well, I, yeah, there you go. Well, so what tools do they have then? So well, what, what's the, uh, the categorical tools that they would have to make these this that I uh. am thinking about? In my head. Well, here we go. So Jake, he taught 4-H class. And we made simple birdhouses and stuff like that. Okay, so like things that you could like nail together. Is that like a nail together project then? Yeah, I mean. Like a park bench maybe? Like some kind of bench kind of thing? Okay. Or. And the kids the, loved what's the, it. What's the budget? I think, <laughs> I do feel like a birdhouse would be like a good project for 4-H. So I'm thinking like for like something that's fairly simple that people really like would be like. If you get like a like a live edge bench with like metal legs, because mm-hmm. that's very very simple to make. Like right. all you're doing is you, you plane the top, you sand it, and you apply finish to it, and then you screw the legs to it. Right. So there isn't a whole lot of let's say skill right. involved in there, but it's a good skill builder because yeah. you learn how to like sand efficiently and sand appropriately and finish prep and then finish wood. Mm-hmm. Uh, so like maybe keep with that, maybe like floating shelf. Oh, that'd be cool. Right? Pretty simple too, because the same kind of concept. The piece of wood, you have to learn how to like sand it, maybe do some edge profiling if it's not live edge, uh, and finish it. And then you can either make your own wall bracket for it, or you can use the manufactured one. It'd be so kind of cool to make be, your own bracket to like be like I made the whole thing, like even the part that goes on the wall. Yeah, I mean, and I think you can do welding for it, right? Is it like a thing? Yeah. Welding, yeah. So yeah. you could like tie that into like a welding thing too, like a weld little bracket, or like make out of wood. So I like the folding shelf idea. You like that? Yeah. So Randy, his daughter, they did. Um, they built a boat. And what? In Girl Scouts. And that's that's a lot of work. Right. So Jake for advanced classes, they taught. They did cutting boards and stuff like that. And some really gifted kids were making furniture. So that's okay. cool. So they have tools then. Yeah. Well, yeah. And they did a ton of <laughs> park bench. Toys. And he goes, I will never make another <laughs> park bench in my life. <laughs> Well, <laughs> you, you, you got enough. <laughs> I love that. I love that. All right, I'm going to answer this and then have, are these new classes? No, I ran out of contacts. Oh, um, they're in these. Oh, well, I'm assuming my glasses. I'm going to take that as he's asking about mine. How blind you are? Yeah. Very blind. I'm very blind. I ran out of contacts and if you're not from America, insurance is the vein of my existence. I have lots of feelings about it. Insurance? So, yeah, insurance. Like health it's insurance. insurance. It's, not a, it's not a health plan. I keep telling people this. Health insurance is not a health plan. It is it's me- insurance. Me- something goes wrong, maybe we'll pay for it. Maybe, but probably not. And so... <laughs> it's not in our interest to pay for it if something goes wrong. So instead what happens is like um, my contacts are covered. They will pay for one year of contacts, but they won't pay for them any time more than a year after the last ones were ordered. So... If you order like a year and like a little bit... Then I have to pay for a little bit. Then don't do it. I know. So it's super frustrating. Put it on your calendar. And so I can't order contacts until like March 2nd, which I did. And then there's always about like a week where I don't have contacts. Because I'm actually very good about only wearing them for as long as you're supposed to. Yeah, I'll pay attention. Yeah, like Matt wears his... Like I... Every two weeks, my, I toss them out and get new ones. Probably like two months out of mine. That's crazy. Mine can, but my eyes can't do it either, so. All right, it's actually already five. I need okay, to head up. No, last question. One more. Well, no, I wanted to find this one comment that was amazing, and I just wanted <laughs> to put it up. It was amazing. It was amazing because I'm like, oh, my gosh, does this person, like, know you? Um, it's possible. No, I mean, like. Yeah, they're there. About your time. Yeah. That wasn't the comment, though, my love. Oh, shoot. 
I want to find it, which this is like, know me, huh? well, I'm not like, did they know that this would drive Matt like secretly crazy? Um, really drives me secretly crazy. No. Where they said that they thought that I was funnier than you. And I was like, yes, I have to put that up. Not Matt's close. like number one thing. Not even close. To be the funniest person. Um, always. Just in this relationship. Also, mostly, like, he always was like, I'm the funniest. Like, I'm not competitive about many things. But he is about funniness. Yeah. Like, very much so. That's like the only reason, like, you're still with me. <laughs> is because I think you're funny. Yeah. <laughs> is that not it? I mean, it's really important to me. That's how I scored you. Yeah. Like, when everyone always asks, you know, why I love Matt, I'm always like, because he makes me laugh. Somehow. Somehow. Just true. Mostly because of my stupidity. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to... Here's a question. When's the next trip to see Mark? I don't know. When's COVID over? Yeah. It's the first place I'm going. It's the first place you're going? Well, yeah. Nicole's making her stuff. So I'm, Fun I'm food? Going, I'm going, yeah. They got an upgraded Oh, yeah. They make a really package. fancy, like, um, outdoor space and indoor space, right? Like, I mean, like, this like a amenities perspective. Ah, yes. You know? Yes. The, the breakfast amenities have been... She's upgraded? Upgraded a little bit. Yeah, okay. To, I don't care. Make whatever you want yourself. <laughs> have some cereal. <laughs> All right, I'm, gonna have I'm lying. She actually made us breakfast most days. I'll say, yeah, I feel like it's probably where like catered to more There than was. There was like French toast one morning. That was pretty good, but Mark posted that I had breakfast sandwich that she made. I'm like, yeah, that's... Yeah. You're like, I'm going to have that. I'm, I'm like, coming now. Yeah, I'm coming now. I'm on my way. Coming for breakfast sandwiches. That's all I want. Oh man. So yeah, he's gonna leave me here. See ya. <laughs> oh. Hey Joseph, welcome. I haven't seen you for a while. Maybe I have, maybe I haven't. See, I can't like I couldn't wear glasses. It drives me nuts. Absolutely. There you go, Shakur reports. There you go. That's a fairly easy 4-H project, but a whole lot to those, and you can really like customize them to do, you know, more than just a simple board. You can do a handle. You can do different profiles on them. That could be a, a fun one. Let's see if I find one more question. Honor differential equations was part of, uh, I guess, AP Calc. So it was fine, I guess. Maybe it wasn't. I don't remember. It might have been pre calc. We did that. I don't really remember. Yeah, there you go. Air sealing. We know things about now. Okay, this last question. Is it worth getting a six inch jointer for a cheap price or should I just save up for an eight inch or a larger jointer? Oh, okay, so it depends on like how cheap a price you're talking about. And if, if the jointer, if having a six inch jointer allows you to do more things than you're able to do now, I say you go for it uh, and then you're gonna end up upgrading later. I mean, pretty much guaranteed, that's not gonna be your last jointer if you're buying a six inch. Unless you're only doing like kitchen cabinets. It's like face frame stuff, then you're fine. But if you're doing furniture, you're gonna want something bigger. Um, so if just having a jointer is gonna change your life, just get it the six inch and get into it and just know you're gonna sell it later for a bigger one. Uh, if you have the budget though, going bigger is definitely a much, well, more long-term perspective on things. But again, if you need to get something in the shop so you can start making stuff, just get it, just get something, get the six inch or buy it. Buy a used one, like a, a used one. There's a lot of six-inch joiners on the used market because a lot of people buy them and realize they're too dang small and they sell them. So you can get a used six-inch joiner for pretty darn cheap, which is, uh, which is nice. All right, everybody. I hope you have a fantastic uh, weekend. hope you had a good week and all that. I will, uh, I guess I'll see you next week and uh, all that. I mean, it's probably, I'll probably be spending most of my week painting a house. Not looking forward to it. But I'm looking forward to the end. <laughs> I'll see you later.